the purpose of doing this interview is instead of you reading about it, you're going to get some live uh, oral history uh, from the people who were actually there. Um, and uh, Ms. Garza Berdua, welcome to Houston Community College. Thank you for inviting me. This interview is sponsored by Museo Guadalupe Aslan, a museum that was founded in 1994 in Houston and also the Chicano Chicana Studies Network uh, that started in 20, 2012. Mm -hmm. One of the projects that we identified was an oral history project, which goes under the name Sembradores de Aslan Oral History Project. And so far, we have over 30 interviews. And our focus is on those individuals who were part of the Mexican-American uh, Chicano, Chicana Civil Rights Movement. So we've interviewed Dr. Guadalupe Quintanilla, who was the first director for the Center for Mexican American Studies at the University of Houston. Uh, we've had an interview with uh, uh, Sam Coronado, who's deceased now, uh, an artist uh, who was based out of Austin, Texas, but did a lot of work in Houston. So this interview with you is a continuation of us piecing together what exactly happened and put it on film. So um, let's go ahead and start, uh, Yolanda. Can I call you just Yolanda? Certainly, okay. please. Tell us about uh, your parents. Uh, who were they and where were they born? Okay, my uh, parents were born in Mexico. My father came here when he was only uh, three or four years old. And my mother came later on. They got married here in, uh, here in uh, Houston, uh, small town, they, they were uh, labor workers. Mm -hmm. My father later on was a construction worker. And uh, uh, my father returned to Mexico when it was very difficult to, uh, racism was very prominent in the United States, what a surprise. And so he had to return to, he was offered by the Mexican government a, a plot of land called Ejidos. Okay. And that is the reason I was born. I was born in Mexico, all of us, six sisters, six uh, members of the family. Mm -hmm. We were born there. I only came here in 1959 as a student to the United States. And so my family had, my parents got married here, leaving the United States, but then went back to Mexico when the Mexico the government offered them the Ejidos Project. And your parents' names? Uh, Cristino Garza Peña mm -hmm. and Emilia Bermea. And Cristino Garza Peña was a founding member of, of the uh, La Obrera, La Organización Obrera Mutualista Mexicana, which is right there on Canal Street. Okay. So my father was an activist at the time. And what year was that when he was an activist? Uh, it was prior to 1930 something. Wow. Yeah, so it is, the our roots for yeah. us, so the Garza Bermea family is right. very strong in this okay. area. And that organization is still alive? It's still alive, I believe it's a few yeah. members, you know, uh, somebody, they, it has kept evolving. Okay. So now kind of give us a quick sketch of your education, starting in elementary school. Okay. Well Something I, very brief. Yes, sir. Well, I went to school in a one-room school, one room, uh, and, and it was uh, in an agriculture area. Uh, we live on a farm, and we, my father was a uh, supporter of us through, with the farm, cotton, corn, etc. And uh, we had... Uh, so you were a country girl? Yeah, I am. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now I am a brother to Houston. Well. So then uh, uh, what happened is that uh, we had a lot of interchange. My grandmother from Houston came to see us. So we have cousins and I always got very... Well, then I went to... Uh, obviously, uh, I had interest in, in language. Mm -hmm. and, and I learned a few words before, before I came to the United States. But uh, let's see, I studied secundaria, preparatoria, and then I studied at the time for ladies uh, was offered only a two-year carrera comercial. Shorthand mm -hmm. uh, and uh, typing, mm -hmm. and that's what, that's what I did. Okay. And then uh, my father, I, I indicated to him that I didn't want to live on a farm. Mm -hmm. I, didn't, I wanted to be in a city. And they offered to give me $800, and they did give me $800 and say, this is all we can give you. You, you do the very best you can, which I did. And then I sent me here to, uh, Houston, to a, uh, a business school. And I, 
attended for one year and I became very interested on international issues or international people, meeting the first time I met African Americans. At the time they were called blacks, you know, and uh, the first time I met people from India, people from other countries, so I got very interested on the international scene. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I married and I had a failed marriage and uh, I became very aware of the contradictions of being a very, um, uh, a very, I very good person, and then to have a very <laughs> bad marriage. But it was uh, later on. I, it was when the women's movement was was increasing in Houston. Uh, you know, the movement of women's rights, mm -hmm. and I saw all my contradictions, and I said something I did wrong. I didn't. I didn't plan my. You know, my marriage. Mm -hmm was too emotional and not planned, not uh, analyzing, and a lot of myths in relation to religion and in relation to sex. So I decided to change. And uh, then and that was my first marriage, was the first uh, failure, mm -hmm. because I felt like uh, I did everything according to what is expected, mm -hmm. and it didn't work out. So mm -hmm. I said, something is not right. Mm -hmm. And then obviously, as all of you know, the 60s were, time of a lot of ideas in the United States. Mm -hmm. So I gravitated to the alternative. Mm -hmm. Let's look for alternative ways of living. And I chose to be different and then I divorced and uh, I was working in a, uh, in a uh, public place, in a laundry place, is what I had to do to support my own, my child, or her one son. And then I met uh, the man I married, which is Walter. Yeah. And, and you'll never let, let never, it go. No, in 48 years <laughs> we have been married. Congratulations. And at the time it was, I met, uh, I heard in the newspapers, and this is so, so, so important that uh, media is so important, like you talk about. In 1969, mm -hmm. I wrote the letter to Mario Compeán, who later on became a, a, a leader of the Maya organization. One of the founders of the Mexican American oh, Youth you. Organization. Oh, he was, okay. Yes. And at the time, See, this is my address that it was, I wrote the letter on April 9 because I was very concerned about racism. April 9, 1969? Yes. Okay. Racism, I was working in a, in a laundry company as a payroll clerk, and the majority of the workers were blacks and Mexican Americans. Mm -hmm. And I was told not to let them be, not to sit down, not to let them sit, mm -hmm. because they were too sweaty. Well, that's, that's what they were doing. They were working in laundry, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt like that was my first impact, I say. May I see the yes, on that? Okay, so um, let's get um, into your participation with the uh, Mexican American Youth Organization, with Mayo. Well, that's what I did. Okay, so let me read this letter Go very ahead. quickly. Uh, it's uh, addressed by you. Uh, the date on there is April the 9th, 1969. It's addressed to Mr. Mario Compian, care of St. Mary's University, San Antonio, Texas. Dear Mr. Compian, I would appreciate very much if you would give me some information on how to get in touch with Mr. Jose Angel Gutierrez, leader of the Mayo organization. Or perhaps you can give me some information on how to participate in this city's Houston with the Mayo organization. I am a Mexican American married to an Anglo, I have been in this city and country for seven years. My husband, who holds a BA degree in English, and I have two years of college in business, are willing to help and increase the good results that the Mayo organization has until now. Hoping to hear from you or someone who can give me such information. Sincerely, Yolanda Garza de Birdwell. And Walter, uh, is it E or B? But want to be Birdwell. Birdwell, yes. okay. So this is in 1969. How did you hear for the first time the word Mayo? Okay, it was a uh, it was a politician that I respect very much. He was in San Antonio, mm -hmm. and I forget his name. He was uh, very involved in the IMF, and uh, he was a very prominent uh, politician in a high level in the Democratic Party. Henry, Henry V. Gonzalez. Okay, the congressman. The congressman. Okay. Very, very uh, impressed me. I mean, those are the first leaders, the Mexican leaders that impressed me because he talked about economics mm -hmm. a lot. And he was actually very smart in that. Well, in any case, he 
mentioned De Mayo in one of his lectures on the TV. Okay, on television here in Houston you heard it? Yes, sir. Okay. So then that's precisely what I congratulate you and I hope that you're successful in bringing positive narratives on TV for us. Because I got it from there and then I wrote this letter and then from there I made my life and I am not regretting it. So that's what I did. So how was, let's call it a marriage for now. Okay. Your family and Mayo, they come together. I went to a demonstration at the Herman Park against the war and I met two leaders from Mayo. Okay, so what was it about Mayo and their mission that got you interested? Why Mayo? Because there was also Blue Light. Absolutely. There was American GI Forum. Why did you choose Mayo? I have nothing against those organizations. I think they've been very good and very appropriate. However, I am a person since I was little of always questioning and always look for alternatives, look for another way. And I thought Mayo was much more my type because they were young and they were not conservative. I am not against conservative people, but I don't like to have, I like to have two or three different narratives or different points of view before I make a decision. And I thought Mayo was the way, and it was. It was a very wonderful place. So you hear Henry B. Gonzalez on television. Mentioning Mayo. Mentioning Mayo. And what did he say about Mayo? I don't recall exactly. I think he was just passing, but Mayo at the time was already making Mr. Gutierrez and Compian, they were already raising the issue of races and the issue of recognition, the issue of us being involved, being part of who we are. We are part of this society. And that's what, and obviously I was being wounded because racism was something that should not be tolerated. I believe racism is an illness, and we have a tremendous illness in the United States with racism. That's my opinion. Okay, so who did you meet that was a member of Mayo, and when, where and when did that happen? It was a demonstration against the war in Vietnam. That was the... The Chicano Moratorium? No, it was just a demonstration. Okay, okay. Then they had speakers from other from other cities, prominent, and we met Gregorio Salazar. Okay. Which was great. And this took place where? In the Herman Park. Here in Houston. Okay. And what year was that? It should have been at the end of 1969. Okay. And 70 something like that. And and Gregorio Salazar and Carlos Calvillo. And another two or more people, but I don't remember the names right now. Do you remember anybody who was taking film of that event? Only the police. Only the police. Okay. It was at, actually, with my, for my experience at the time, it was, it was the only, Mayo was the only organization that I saw integrated with Anglos, Blacks, and other groups. Mm -hmm. So that also was very attractive because I believe in multiculturalism. Okay. Um, Yolanda, you see the police there mm -hmm. taking film, mm -hmm. documenting what was going on, but yet you were not deterred by continuing your, your uh, participation with my old wife. Well, because of, because of uh, obviously I am from a, uh, I am from a working class background, very proud of my family, very proud of being Mexican, very proud of being uh, some part of the United States, some issues of the United States I support, some issues of the United States I don't support. Uh, I support the Constitution, but some practices, especially now. Are, so I, uh, uh, I am very, what was, the, what was the, 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 the root of your question? You were not? Oh, uh, because of the police? Oh, no. Yeah. Because Walter and I, um, since he was in Army Intelligence, and he was asked, and his job, if I may say this, Walter, uh, he was asked to monitor Barbara Jordan, who was a, was a black leader in the African-American community, was uh, asked to monitor Mr. Gonzalez in, in his job as a, as a, as a as his, his job. So those are good citizens. Those are citizens that work at the Unitarian Church. Mm -hmm. So why should I be concerned 
who will monitor me because I do believe, as you can see me, I'm, I'll be 75 years old. Mm -hmm. If you know the laws of the United States and do not violate them, but you practice what you're supposed to practice, you can survive being an activist. And I, I am a proof of that. I'm 75. Yes, I've been arrested, but never been to prison because I, I stole something. I have been only arrested because I am practicing my my duty of speaking out if I don't like something. Okay. So Yolanda, hold us by the hand, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What happened when you get to this protest? In the beginning, in the middle, and at the end, and who was there? Okay. Well, I I obviously Walter and I made the decision that uh, we were going to have a non-conventional relationship. Mm -hmm. Or activities were not going to be to become, as they call it now, the one percenters. We are workers, and we're just going to have a quality life. We don't want to be like the Jones. So we say, let's go, let's go and do what we want to do. He was already finding a new life himself, because he was young. He wanted us younger than I am. And so, so then I say, we say, let's do it and uh, see what happens. And uh, I have a thousand dollars. Thousand pages of the FEI. FBI? And, yes, FEI. You're and popular. I have the page for. Well, yes, I am very popular. <laughs> and I would be worried if I didn't have the FEI file. And obviously, they wanted to find out if I, because I'm political, because I am who I am, that why I, uh, my relative, my experience in the United States. And I say, I am a very good citizen. Okay, Yolanda, take us back to that oh. that event at Herman Park. Oh, okay. Hold us I, by the hand. Oh, okay. Well, yes, what I'm sorry. What happened in the beginning? I, at the beginning. I wanted to. Uh, I joined. I say I'm going to join. Okay. And they accepted me. We have to have our meetings at here in the north side on a gasoline station. Mm -hmm. They let us use the place, and then from there, we started organizing. And uh, <coughs> I believe that it is a must to belong to an organization if you want to have an impact. I got you. Even if it's five people. Okay. Five people is already relevant. So we start meeting and then we became leaders and with uh, Gregorio, Poncho Ruiz, and myself and Walter. Okay. Uh, take us back to Herman Park. Mm -hmm. What happened in the beginning, in the middle, and at the end? When, when you, during that protest? Well, obviously, it was fascinating because it was among the first ones of anti war uh, protests for, protest for me. Mm -hmm. And to hear so many. Anglo young people, African American young people, and I don't think we had a Latino speaking, mm -hmm. which is something that we always, I always go to a place and say, how many Latinos are here? Mm -hmm. And if I don't hear the narrative, I say, eh, something is not right here. If we are not, if we are a very a large population, and so it was, we were there, and we are not in many places. You're talking about media, we are not, we still are not. And we have stories to say. And some people see the stornuda, if they sneeze, they write about it. Mm -hmm. And they put them on TV too, but not us. Mm -hmm. So, hey, something is wrong with this picture. Okay. But anyway, so I became a very involved with Mayo, and obviously I acquired a lot of information, I acquired a lot of uh, experience, and that's what I am. And if I had to do it over again, the only thing is I'm older. Uh, Yolanda, I have a niche to learn more about what happened at Herman Park. Oh, well. At the beginning, at the middle, and at the end. What well, was, exactly. We, just, I, just didn't, I was an observer. I was not a participant. Okay. Remember? I was a person being uh, surprised of having a group of people actually in public saying they are against the war in Vietnam. So you participated in the anti war movement? Yes. Okay, at Herman Park? Yes. And uh, Mayo was there. That's how I met the Mayo people. And you were doing that as a Mayo member? No, it's a, just as a beginner. Okay, as a beginner. I got you. And okay. I met those people there. Okay. So Mayo The Mayo members. You met them at the protest. Yes. Okay. So one of, some of the members that were there was uh, Gregorio it, and uh, Carlos Calvillo. Carlos Calvillo, anybody else? I don't remember anybody okay. else. Uh, they may have been. But, okay. but uh, remember, I was no, just. No, no. Pardon me? Benito Maldonado. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Benito. So let's go to, uh, let's shift. Uh, do you want to say anything else about that, that protest? No, that just that it uh, was interesting for me and, and learning. A very, uh, there is something that I have to say. If you are from a deprived economic, like many of us are having mm -hmm. or are demonstrations, 
lectures, movies with the right people. You don't have to ask. You can learn a lot. I learned a lot about that. Okay. So when you left the uh, the event at Herman Park, what did you leave with that you think was valuable for you? I made connections. I made connections with these Latino people, Mexican-Americans that I wanted to be in, in touch. And then from there, my life uh, changed completely because I, 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 uh, I became very active. And obviously, I already had some idea what I did not want to be, okay. a consumer. I just don't want to be a Mexican-American CNS. I see them seeing on TV. We, they want us as consumers only. Okay. Okay, now, with regards to that protest that took place at Herman Park, um, what do you think was the main role of the police, and what did, did not happen with the police that they should have done? Uh, Were well, your constitutional rights protected? Oh, at, at that time we did not have a, we did not have a conflict, that, at that time that I remember. It was sub subsequent to that, yes, we did have. What is the role, if you ask me? Well, let me tell you, sir, I, if you do, I'm sure you do know, in being a professor, the police is, and that's precisely what having so many problems right now, is the main job of the police is to protect the status quo. And the status quo are those that have power. If we are very weak, like we have in this democ democracy that we have, we are but that's why the, we are being we are being uh, put down, like we saw in Ferguson, like we saw in Ruben Torres being killed right here, like we saw in Mr. Uh, uh, this person that was killed in uh, this uh, Chicano uh, newsman uh, that was that was killed in, 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 in uh, Salazar, Salazar okay. Gregorio Salazar. Here's a man with a degree. Here's a man working for an institution, working for the, uh, a, a newspaper in Los Angeles in the largest demonstration. He's writing notes, just perhaps something similar to what we're doing, something intellectual, if you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And he was killed. And they say they made, it, they made an error. The police made an error. But they killed one of our people that was giving us voices in, in, in Los Angeles. Okay. And, and so I'm glad that you remember him, because I, I just think that that was a crime, killed, uh, done by the police. OK. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, with our students uh, in this in this class uh, oh. in the humanities so. uh, 1305 an intro to Mexican American studies. Uh, let's go back to that time when you had your meetings uh, with Mayo. Uh, it was here on Fulton Street. It was on. Uh, Where exactly was yeah, it? It was right there, very close to downtown. Okay. Uh, Fulton, uh, close to Gregorio's house, and then we went to his back of his back of his uh, garage. Okay. He had a, they had a garage uh, mm -hmm. in, 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 in Gregory's place. Yeah. And we went there uh, to meet there. Okay. Uh, so it was here in Northside? In Northside, absolutely. The okay. center was in Northside. Okay. We did have a center in, in Northside. Okay. And uh, what was the initiation that you went through as a Mayan member? Was there an application? Was there an oath? What exactly okay. took place when you became a member? Okay. When... Uh, Obviously, if you are in this class, you will find out that uh, the Mexican-American Chicano group is not different than any other group. We go to transitions. Mm -hmm. There has always been a, a, an understanding between, uh, obviously, as you know, I, I'm Mexican. I was born in Mexico. Mm -hmm. But obviously, I came to the United States. I'm part of both, the both countries. Mm -hmm. So at the beginning, it was a little bit, uh, I was very welcome in the Mayo leadership that I mentioned to you. Mm -hmm. I was the only woman. I was very wonderful experiences when we traveled together. We slept. I slept with all the guys, but in the same room. But of course, some people have problems when I express that. But I'm saying to you is that it was in this to save money. We went to a hotel to Dallas and we we spent the night. I was I was treated royally. You slept. You slept among them. Among. Thank not, you. Not really. <laughs> well, thank you. I got a throw once. I get a throw again. But that's what I mean exactly. But when I mentioned that in a conference, uh, uh, the LULAC, the ladies, uh, they were completely shocked. Because so you, I were, said, the, you yeah. were the only woman uh, member? Yes, uh, well, when we Among, travel, yeah, and yeah. Uh, to save money, what are we going to do? Yeah. I mean, uh, yeah. please, okay. we slept okay. in the same 
Why you say the same room? Okay. But so that the public understands you slept among them. Among them, well, <laughs> you know this thing. But uh, if people know me, they know it. <laughs> so that's what. Uh, so it was a great experience. Uh, I, I I never have belonged to. Then le subsequent subsequent to that, I have belonged to other organizations. Okay. But my was my best. So getting back to the initiation. Oh what exactly no! Happened? Let me tell you, uh, Gregorio. If you did not know Gregorio, you can Google him or you can look at the uh, records. Uh, Gregorio Salazar. Salazar. Okay. He was very small guy, younger than we are. Very, very small. Very, uh, always ready to do things outside the box. Because let me tell you, people put you in a box and they expect you to do certain things. Like me, because I'm Mexican, they think I like to cook. Hell, I don't like to cook. <laughs> but they, that's what the thing is. You know what I mean? And Gregorio was very so. So we had Walter and the Army Intelligence. He knew all about the system. Uh, Gregorio and Alice, myself, a person that is very uh, inquieta, you know. And so then we had a very in Poncho Ruiz. So all of us did not have any conflicts, and we planned among those four of us mm -hmm. what we were going to do in reference to never do anything to hurt other people. Non-violence. Non-violence. Okay. Not to hurt other people. Only to defend ourselves, and that's still the case. Okay. So, in short, there was no initiation. In no. Okay. They just told you you're a member now. Well, and then, but of course you have to participate, and you have we have to plan, and we plan everything the night before. We didn't tell everybody, and that's how we were so successful. Successful, and then with the surprise. Okay. When we took over the church, it was surprised. So again, uh, Yolanda, hold us by the hand, so to speak. And take us to that meeting, to those meetings that you had at Mayo. Do I smell uh, coffee or, and pan dulce? Oh, uh, what, what was there? Oh my God, we had, we ate, <laughs> we ate everything. <laughs> yeah. And then and later on, we had people from the community uh -huh. giving us taquitos and tamales. So we were, uh, for me, it was uh, actually it was very good to be happy to be involved. So who got the space there? Uh, the, the Mayo. Uh, Headquarters here in Houston. In uh, our oh well, that was later on that uh, we uh, we had some people calling us up and say we want to donate something, mm -hmm. and they donated it. They donated a place. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a lawyer uh, with the school board. It was uh, Mr. Freeman, okay. a Jewish lawyer that like us, mm -hmm. and he had a client mm -hmm. that owed him some money and uh, say here is your place. I already arranged it. So we had a place. Whoa, that's, uh, yes. that's incredible. So we had very lot of And then we had uh, calls, people say, come and pick up $300, $100, and then the community okay. helped us. So we had a lot of support. So what was your uh, role in Mayo? I was a Mayo spokesperson. You were the spokesperson? And, and Gregory. Yeah. OK. Uh, all right, now take us to the occupation of the Juan Marcos Church here on uh, Fulton Street. What year did that happen, and what was the reason that Mayo okay. occupied the building? Well, we are all a product of what we read, and we are all a product of what's happening at the time. And I want to make very clear when I leave this, uh, this uh, conversation that you have to have a very strong support, at least of three or four people, before you do be activist. You have to have a lawyer. You have to ha have no record of any kind, be almost impeccable. Because they will get you mm -hmm. if they don't. Because they are they arrested me once just because they thought I was not a citizen and I had obviously I was a citizen. Mm -hmm. So, but that is the, okay. Uh, about the churches that at the time, as again, there were a lot of empty places like they are right now, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of homeless people, a lot of people that need uh, need housing. Mm -hmm. So we asked the Presbyterian Church if they, we could use this corner, uh, Fulton and. I forgot, but it's a full time, the, the president. Collinsworth. Yes, and it's the Juan Marcos Church. Right. And that Juan, is still there? Yes, yeah, still there. Mm -hmm. Presbyterian, because I, I used to live, and they call me a limousine radical. I used to live in West University <laughs> 25 years. Limousine radical. And yeah, they call me limousine, <laughs> among other things. Okay. But that's one of the names. <laughs> because uh, thanks to Walter <laughs> and myself, that we are not very impressed with consumerism. We only concentrate on having fun or doing what we need to do and having housing and education and that and all activism in my case. Okay. So we live at West University and it was a church, very fancy church, Presbyterian, and then we saw this Presbyterian and said, Well, this is a very nice 
Presbyterian Church of West U in the corner. Why not to use this over here? So Gregory and uh, we got together and said, let's ask them to open it up for us to have our to have a center there. Mm -hmm. We met more than 20 times. They did not want us to use the place. And y'all introduced yourself as my Oh, of course, yes. Okay. Oh, yeah. And what was, what, what was the purpose of using the church? We wanted to, to have a luncheon. We wanted to have conferences. We okay. wanted to have, a, we wanted to give a, a point of view. Okay. And obviously ours was saying, get active, do something, move. You know. So, free, so free breakfast. Free breakfast, and we did actually. Yeah. So the, uh, when did the organization Mayo decide to occupy the place illegally? Well, we went to breakfast first. So yeah, we always have fun. We <laughs> went to breakfast, and then we sat, and then we say, uh, okay, what can we do to really change the dynamics? Of it? And uh, I don't know who said, well, let's occupy it, and we decided to occupy it. But let me tell you how we did. Obviously, we went to the procedure to ask them to do it. They didn't let us do it. And did you, do you remember who you talked to at that time? Yeah, the, the Presbyterian uh, officials, uh, or one or two people from the Presbyterian downtown, you know, the one on Main Street. Uh, they, and it used to be the district attorney used to be a member of that. Uh, oops. Do you remember names? Yes, I remember the district attorney. Carol Carol, uh, Carol. Carol Baines. Okay. Wonderful. He's training, he's training, that's why. Okay, so, uh, so what happened is that they, they did not let us use it. We decided to take it off, and we did. But let me tell you the beauty, we had more than 10 students from Rice University, University of Houston, to come and volunteer. The next day we took it over, it was people sweeping, cleaning, and everything, and we established ourselves. We, at one time we had more than 100 people in the meeting in the and that at the For my own For my own Okay. How we took over, yes, we did a little bit of, and then to get in a little corner, yeah. and then we had someone immediately to replace. You see what I mean? Yeah. To get in, right. obviously, you know, you, a little panel was broken, but immediately we had someone, another panel to be put up. Fix it. And then when they asked us, the police said, how did you get in? Magic power. <laughs> <laughs> that was the answer. Well, that was magic. I mean, we we fix it up. So we didn't buy late and then we fix it, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so they could not arrest us because we didn't break anything. Okay. We they, well they did uh, we did occupy we did that. Okay. And so the whole purpose of occupying it was to have meetings to yes. to provide services to the community. Whose decision was it to occupy the building? Normally the decisions were made no more than five people. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are among, among those. So Gregorio Salazar was one. Oh, absolutely. Poncho? Poncho, myself, Yourself. Walter, and I don't remember the other person. But uh, then, but let me just say this to you. Well, According to Alex. statistics, eh? oh, Alex. Alex Rodriguez, okay. a glorious success. Okay. Gloria Rubik's success. Got it. Okay. Right. However, uh, I wanted to tell you something that could be you all know more computer than I do. According to statistics, it only takes 10% of people to change other people's mind because most of the people don't, are not active. So if we were five of us, I mean. So how long were your, how long did your life about been? Two, about two weeks. Two weeks. We, two weeks and we were very successful because uh, we had people coming all the time. It was a very active st space. And did the staff from the Presbyterian Church come in to see your, your order of business? Well, they had a problem because we were young. And also, as I mentioned to you, we did everything. I mean, we kept the place clean. We, we gave positive. Uh, we wanted the place not to, you know, we wanted the place for education purpose. Right. And we wanted the main message was this, as, and it still is now. Why does it make any sense to have a lot of empty places while other people don't need the places? I mean, something is wrong with the inequalities has increased tremendously. And we still have a lot of homeless people. I, I saw a blanket right now as I was coming in, hanging out from a tree. Okay. So something is wrong with the system that we have, but they don't want you to question that. So this occupation was an uh, unarmed occupation? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Um, and what was one of the major events that you remember very clearly that took place at the One Michael Center? Okay, it was leadership from the community. In fact, one person that came 
how do I then became a Mengelomenschachelein, became a political con uh, democratic uh, person here running in the city of, of the city. Uh, we have teachers, we have students, we have police also outside, but they, they treated us, they didn't come inside, they did not take, they, are, they did not remove us. Okay. Because what would happen is that we knew we could not stay, but we made a point, you know, but they did not want us. Because let's, let's face it, uh, churches it, and are part of the institutions to keep the power structure, mm -hmm. and they, they are business too. Before we get Yolanda, did you, did you show any films? And what Marco said. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. So what? What? What was? Who made the decision, or how many people made the decision within Mayo to end the occupation of the one Marco said? Again, the same, uh, the same leadership, and also, but I must say, behind the scenes on all our activities, there were people like yourself, the ones in academia, <coughs> the ones in leadership that made the call and say. And I specifically remember a call by someone, I'm not going to mention the name, but it's already gone. They said, you're going to be infiltrated by someone is going to come as an Anglo, as an Anglo lady and a, and a Chicano, and they are working on the other side. Be ready for it. So when we received them, we knew who they were, right? Mm -hmm. So we kept information that in our, our activities, we did not share it with them. That's the only thing. That's the only criteria that we have. Any activity we, we, we did it of ourselves, and it was a lot of unity among the socials. But there were contradictions too, because some of us were more radical, and they said, ah, they were communists. You know, like anything, you know, they are communists. True, in this country, I think we still have a right to read about other practices, other styles of economic system, because communism is another economic system. And obviously, I read about it, Walter has read about it, Gregorio read about it, in fact, I went to Cuba twice. So it was not a, uh, it, so people label us to try to take, to take the, our message, discredit our message, okay? But how are you gonna learn if you do not uh, compare it? You know, if you make no comparison? Mm -hmm. And obviously, we have read a lot, yes, okay. but obviously we live under capitalism. Okay, so, when the decision is made to leave the Juan Marcos Center, what happens? Take us, take us by the hand and, sh and, 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 and lead us into all of the activities that took place when y'all decided to leave the Juan Marcos okay, Center. Okay, well, uh, again, we were uh, given a direct or direct uh, consejos, mm -hmm. uh, advice from people with more power than we had, and it was time for us to either <laughs> If we stay, it will have become a legal matter, and none of us is, I was rich while they was working, I mean, he was supporting me, so therefore, we did not have uh, the ability to, 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 put, to put up with it. So it was a practical uh, decision, but we, we felt like it was time to, to leave because of that economically, and we made, our, we made our point. And we had a conference with my leaders from Mayo that came to also to that, to that, to that event. Such as who? I don't remember. I don't remember. Maria Pompia? Did he come? Maybe uh, it was another gentleman. Jose Angel Gutierrez. No, Jose Angel. No, he was uh, later on at the University of Houston, but now that, now that Mr. Patla. Perhaps. Uh, yeah. Yes. He came to to the meeting and and talk about how different we were from uh, we we were called Ma Barrio Mayo, you know, from the community. And there was a University Mayo. Yes, the University, University of Mayo. But you guys were the Barrio Mayo. The Barrio Mayo. And that was a different difference because we were more in the community. Yes. Okay. 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 So um, to finish off on, on that uh, chapter, the Juan Marcos occupation, what do you think was the major accomplishment of Mayo in occupying that building? I am sure some of you have heard the term how docile we are, the Mexicans. Docile? Docile. Uh -huh. We take it. Uh, well, at least at the time, it was very prominent. And so I saw so we kind of did the same thing. Mm -hmm. We wanted to prove or to show that we were not docile, that we were not going to be quiet, that we were not going to accept, and we are still not going to accept. I don't care if I'm 70, 80, 90 years old. The status quo, if it, if it, if it, if it affects a human being, mm -hmm. 
if it affects your dignity and if it affects your education, you have to stand up. Or else, you have, what are you going to leave? In Washington TV, where they present us all as drug uh, runners or, or, or negative. I mean, the TVs, remember, also, the programs on TV, all, all the companies, especially Univision, is owned by a company in Israel. What are they going to say? Obviously, they're going to be, you know, in, in Mexico, Univision. And then, uh, and here in the United States, all, most of the companies are owned privately. What are they going to promote? They're going to promote their stuff. It's like I'm promoting you as a Mexican 75-year-old woman. I'm promoting to you that, is, uh, that if you don't have dignity and you don't have respect for your culture and what you contribute, my family has contributed here, then what do I have? I don't care if I'm full of diamonds. I have nothing. So that is the message. We always are fighting for the message. And I hope that you are successful in your films because we are not in the films. We're not. We are, and I think we should be. Look at the beautiful people here. They should be in the fields. Mm -hmm. thank, thank you, Yolanda. Well, it's true. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, you need to take a break. No. All right. Okay. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, not really. Well, let's move to the uh, the protest that took place at the San Jacinto oh, yeah, oh, San Jacinto Monument. Yes. What what year was that? And what month? And and oh, April twenty first. April the twenty first yeah. of. Um, I mean, well, it has to be after 71, 72, I guess. I, I'm, not sure. I'm not sure. So, but it's 70s, I believe. What was, why were, why was Mayo against the idea of the celebration of the Battle of San Jacinto? Tell us how, okay. why, why Mayo was uh, against that. Okay, at the time, we were also involved with a cause that affected African Americans, which was, uh, Lee Ori Johnson was uh, a, a, a person that was uh, unfairly treated in the uh, legal system, and he was in prison. And the governor, uh, Briscoe, I believe his name, no, Briscoe, no, the city, Preston Smith. There was chance at the university, and we went to that. Free Lee Ori Johnson, free Lee Ori Johnson. Free Lee Ori. Free Lee Ori. Free Lee Ori. Sounds like free holes, but for the governor of Texas, he says, "What is these people talking about free holes?" And we say, and obviously, I mean, this is true. This is true. He said, "Free leores, okay?" But our governors are not very small, okay? They don't represent us. So he thought that we were saying free holes. Is what these people have against free holes? <laughs> so we, from then we were attending, and we say. Let's go to the demonstration, and uh, the, because he was going to be coming to, to to celebrate the accomplishment of taking the state of Texas from Mexico. So we went over there, and he says when he started uh, speaking, the governor in San Jacinto, he says, "I think this is going to be the shortest short, um, shortest speech I ever give, it, because we were there protesting him, and he did not he didn't finish the the, the, the speech." Why we were protesting? Because they're always uh, unfortunate. I mean, they, they talk about it, and I don't want to. I know that we all live here. I know that there are wonderful people in the United States, but we are very misinformed, and we only take the information that doesn't help us. Such as, you cannot demonize all the Mexican Americans, and you cannot demonize all the African Americans. We are as important as any other group, and and and, and it was horrible at the time, and it is horrible right now, to have, oh, we won this battle. Of course, it was, a, it was Mexico had corruption, and it still does, at the time of the, the land taking over for $15 million from Mexico. Yes, we lost it, okay, I accept that. But just because we lost one battle doesn't mean that you're gonna keep me as a slave. So that was the, the, the narrative. They always talk about, oh, we want this thing, you know. And so we wanted to say, yes, but you have to, we contribute, we pay taxes, we have, you have to respect us. And this is still the call that we, I make right now. We pay taxes. And who was with you at this protest? Oh, all of us were there. Walter was there. I was put between two horses. Big, huge horses. Who put you there? The police. Yeah, they, they wanted to corral me. They, they didn't want us there, okay? So remember, we went in a demonstration, mm -hmm. but I was put in two horses, and I, I was very scared because I thought the horses were going to 
squash me. Squash me, see. Uh, we were about 10 or 15 of us, I believe. Is that, would that be your recollection? Well, we were at least 15. Uh, so yeah. Poncho was there? Oh, yes. Gregorio was Gregorio there. Gregorio was there. Uh -huh. uh, who else is there? Well, uh, a lot of youth. We used to have young people with us. Los, los Pachuquitos, they call them Pachuquitos, they were the one before they went to the administration. And obviously, since Walter and I are the oldest, we always wanted to make sure that they were safe. Okay. And Yes, they didn't. Uh, they didn't hurt me, but I got scared, obviously. <coughs> but uh, not uh, not scared enough to stop. But I was scared. And do you ha did you bring a document about that event? By uh, any chance? I didn't bring a document about that event, of it, but it is in the newspapers, okay. in the Chronicle, because because other people have done the research. Is there? Okay. So who made the decision within Mayo to go and protest? Us. Uh, uh, the, the the core group that I have mentioned. I Very guess. few people. Okay. And then we called the rest, and then people came. So who found out about the event initially that led you to decide to go on Ah, purpose? this is something I would say. As we had people that did not like us, we had people, a lot of people that like us. They call us. They call us on the telephone and tell us what was happening, and, and, and they, you know, so we knew about the events because people tell us. About it. They call us. Do you know who, who called you specifically? No, uh, like I do not uh, remember the person that told us that we were going to be infiltrated, not by one time, many times. Mm -hmm. So assume that. If you are activist, you're going to have uh, five people that you meet, you're going to have one that is going to be on the other side. But it's all right. If you're doing everything legal and you are staying with the Constitution, nothing will happen to you. Look at me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what do you think was the main thing that was accomplished by going to the protest at, uh, at the uh, San Jacinto Battle? Okay, well, I don't know. You, you been, how long have you been in Houston? I've been in, I was in Houston for 25 years until the last four years. Mm -hmm. If you remember, they, don't e they didn't even come to us. We were ignored everywhere. We were ignored in the media. We were ignored in the academia. It's, and now there are books, thanks to, thanks to people that have like you that have classes on Mexican American, they don't even want to say that we're, there are some people that don't even want to say that they, they are from Spain, or that we're from Spain instead of being like, so what was accomplished? This is what's accomplished. In Mexican American studies was established, and, and the, in, the, in that period of, of protest, and we were not the only ones, African Americans did it, the, uh, some of the Anglo group did it against the world. Native so, Americans. Native Americans, especially that, the yeah, others. So what was accomplished? That we were open, but we're losing that. We are losing that because the narrative has changed a lot. They want to control us with the media, and the media is not a friend. Not the media. Not. Alternative media is, like, uh, we have a lot of alternative media, like a democracy now that come, and a lot of other. KPFT radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But the regular media, they want us to be, like I say, only consumers of what they tell us. What was written on the placards that you all carried at this protest? Do you remember? Oh, I don't, I don't remember uh, exactly, but mainly what we wanted to be is not to be ignored, you know, to, give a to give us a space to, to speak out. And uh, I, 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 we did not like the governor, so we probably told him to, to go home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, okay, so nobody was arrested? No, in that nobody was arrested. Uh, we were still good and legal. And who drove to the, to the battleground? We went in different cars. So you didn't have a, a sponsor. It was out of your own money. Oh, everything we did is in our own money. We still do whatever we do now is uh, with our own money, and that way you don't have any uh, 401 c mm -hmm. restrictions. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, um, with regards to the female participation at this protest, uh, uh, besides you, who, what other females that you remember were there? Oh, uh, Angie. It was a young lady. God, I wish I. Uh, see her again. Angie, a 16-year-old kid, a young lady. What about Gloria Guardiola? Gloria Guardiola was very active. Uh -huh, yes. She was a Mayo member too? Yes, she was a Mayo okay. member. Very, uh, as you know her. Have you interviewed her? That's the one. Uh, I don't have her. Well, okay, uh, but I'll get it from you. Uh, Gloria Guardiola, uh, but uh, she was working still, so, so she participated when she came. And we had other people that came. Okay. We also have... Uh, what other organizations participated besides my own? At one time... A at this event? Oh, that's at that event. No, only us. Only you. Okay. Okay. Uh, only us. So
So what did you expect before you got there that you were going to accomplish as an organization? Different from what actually came out? Well, or, we all, or whether they're the same? Yes, we always thought the issue that we could be arrested, okay? So that's what I say. We always have to be very careful to have only the minimum information, your driving license or something, and not to have too much stuff because you could be arrested and have some contact and have someone to take care of you or your case in case that 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 was always a possibility because we remember we were pushing the envelope a little bit. A lot. A lot. Maybe sometimes. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that it was what it was accomplished is that we want and that it needs to be done again and in and, and this uh, in this arena, especially young people. Don't believe what I say. Question it. You have to question things three or four times before you make a decision. Do not believe it. And don't believe anything that is written. Because sometimes they write, there are some people that write to look at this uh, newsman that came Williams and look at the Fox News that came up the other day. They make the stories up just to maintain the status quo. So Yolanda, there was a a very significant uh, women's conference that mm. you participated in as a Mayo member? Absolutely. Okay. And uh, what was this conference called? What was the official name of it? Do you well, remember? it was the first Chicana conference in Houston. And uh, Gloria Guardiola, who is, was a wonderful friend of mine also, uh, she's, still, she's still in Houston. We wrote this pamphlet <clears throat> in English and in Spanish, and it's called Destrucción de Mitos, Formación y Práctica del Pensamiento Nuevo. Uh, the woman, destruction of myths, formation and practice of new thinking. And it covers every issue that you can think of, taboo issues. Now, was this the actual uh, yes. program? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, this is a, we were given that, we were given the section on sex. Oh, a surprise, right? Mm -hmm. But that, that was, and it was very controversial, okay? Because we have to deal with the issue of patriarchism. The issue of the church, the issue. Of, so it was a very controversial, and and so she and I wrote this this uh, pamphlet, and we produce it with our own money, mm -hmm. and we have an artist that uh, that uh, Leo Tanguma, right, and we have uh, uh, Sor Juan Inez de la Cruz, who is a very important Mexican his, uh, his, uh, person in our history, mm -hmm. Jose Alfarez de Dominguez. Uh, the hanging of women, you think, sometimes when you hear about democracy in offense, uh, they say, oh, we're, we're because we're democratic in the United States. Yes, they used to hang up people, okay? And this, this is a this green beret? Yes, uh -huh. and that is a, yes. A brown beret, yeah. yeah, it's, it's based on, based on uh, the woman that I, that I tell you, that I like very much, you know, one of our participants. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so we wrote about different subjects, Sex, one of them, art, intermarriages, professional women. So this was used for the workshop. Yeah, for the workshop. Okay. And so we have Linfa Lorenzo attended that class. If you you all know Linfa, Linfa Lorenzo was the owner of Linfas. Mexico. She Rizzo. was there. She was not as prominent uh, yet economically, mm -hmm. but she asked a question. And obviously, you can imagine at that time to write in reference to orgasms very controversial. But we have to talk about it. If, you, if, if there is something that, if you don't discuss it, it's going to become a problem. So this is dated 1971. Well, that's what the yep. difference was. Gloria Guardiola so, <coughs> and Yolanda got suffered. And then a woman, a professor from the university, subsequent to that, a professor came and interviewed me. And I gave her all my papers. And her name is May Lay. She's a Mex uh, half a Chicana and half uh, African American, I believe, Blackwell. And she wrote extensively on our on our conference. Why our conference was very controversial was because we chose, and this is between Gloria and I, as a woman, the two women, that we decided to touch on issues that are that are taboo. And that is very important because why did I become interested in the woman issues? I have to say something that there's only two men here, but they are very advanced men. I am, I was a virgin when I got married. And guess what my first husband told me, uh, the first days of marriage? Is this all you know how to do? <laughs> oh, hurts? 
So am I supposed to say, oh, Liam, I have to learn uh, somewhere else? Uh, you see the contradiction there? And this is my own race. I was married to a Mexican before, okay? He didn't look like me, right? No, he did not. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what I'm saying, ladies, is that yes, it's true that uh, things are a little hard and we become what has hurt us. Because my parents told me this is the way you're supposed to do things right. I did it right. You know, I learned English, did, 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 did everything there, and then somebody told you that. So there is a problem with that, with that. Aspects of our culture are wonderful, but aspects of our culture need to be reviewed and revised and revised and revised. Because it happened to me. And I'm sure he did not mean to offend me and hurt me, but he did hurt me. Because he, look, look, he created a monster. <laughs> now I, I, so then my relationship with Walter changed a lot because we, we became a marriage of nobody was going to be a, a dominant person. We were going to balance it. Obviously, he worked more than I did. So give us the basics, uh, Yolanda, of this conference. Um, where did it take place? And who organized it? Ah, okay. It took place. Remember uh, Elma Barrera? Yes. Okay, she was uh, Elma Barrera and the uh, a group of lay and uh, Maria Jimenez <coughs> and some other ladies. I was not involved in the whole organizing, but it, it took place on Canal Street and at uh, YMCA. YMCA. Okay. And it became very controversial again because. Like any other group, our community has contradictions. And it's, it's like we are like living on a laboratory. Every day we have to see what works, what doesn't work, what, what, what system works, what doesn't work. And at the time, there were some ladies from California that did not want us to focus on the issue of sexism within our community. They thought that that would be uh, not appropriate, or vice versa, I don't remember. The only thing is, that's what we presented. Ours was a very open forum, and yes, there were some political issues. People wanted to maintain the issue of only Chicanas, and they didn't want the voices of other groups. Remember, nationalism is wonderful, but at a certain point, you have to be realistic and see that the world doesn't function like that. We have to be a, a integrated group. You know, we want to be part of it, and that's what we're fighting for. So it was a lot of dynamics. Out. It was a contradiction. It was a big problem in the conference. Okay, uh, at one time because of ideology, everything has to do with what you know, what you read. Because again, somebody had an agenda, like anything else. If I come here, I came with an agenda. My agenda today is to to comply to you because I have a war. And second is I want people to know that you can be an activist if you do things right. You, it, nothing happens to you if you speak out. At the contrary, at least it liberates you. At least you don't, you don't have to take pills, be <laughs> angry. So uh, <clears throat> what were some of the titles of the workshops at this conference? And was there any film that was taken? I think it probably was. Well, you have to address that to Elma Barrera. Uh, she it will be the one, and also some men were, and then uh, also some people did not want men there. Some, you know, there were different lines, like always. Was Carlos Calvillo there? I don't remember. Okay. Uh, so give us the names of some of these workshops that took place. Well, there was an economics, there was also the issue, as it is now, the two sisters that we have, the Democrats and the Republicans. Sometimes they sleep together, but that's what we had. And they were ladies like that, promoting like it is now. Same thing. Uh, the line of uh, um, the movement. That's why it's so important, this class, I, and I, I can say that. If I had come to U.S. and not have been active, I think I would have made a big mistake to come to U.S. I could have gone to another country. And Let me be up to another country because it is becoming too close-minded. It's becoming too close-minded. People only want to hear the, uh, the nice things, well, God, they look around, there's none. So wh what do you think uh, was the most important message that promoted Chicanismo or Chicanisma in the conference? We broke, I think the conference was extremely important because it was controversial and people had to face their own realities. And, and that people start like this lady here, 
you know, this lady, she wrote the book, and then another, uh, I have another lady that, that wrote another pamphlet, but I don't have it with me. People started, and this is an academia, these are professors, okay? These are people that did their research. Oh, there's another lady that is doing research in reference to this. Here in Houston, a professor, I forgot her name. She went and interviewed me at the Valley, uh, in my house in, in Laguna Vista. So what made is activists, people that actually do things, are the ones that provide the material for the educators to speak about. They do some, at least a point, at least a lot. If we were not protesting the, the issue of education, if African Americans have not, uh, uh, you know, uh, have not uh, uh, rejected the issue of like what like happened in Ferguson, I mean, other lawyers, other people don't have the, don't have the material to discuss the whatever fragile democracy we have to, to bring it up to another level. Okay, so let's continue on the basics of the conference. Um, was there a steering committee for the conference? It was, and I was not involved in it. I was asked to participate as a Mayo with this, this, uh, this pamphlet, and that's what I did. Okay. So Mayo was one of the sponsors of the conference? Uh, remember? I don't remember, but I, I who, assume. Who were the sponsors? Do you remember? No, I don't remember. But uh, there is, it has paperwork I don't remember, to be okay. honest. But it was a big, it was, it was a big involvement, and even the Catholic, you remember? Unfortunate institutions that we have connected, that they are also, they appear that they work with us, but sometimes they don't work with us. And they, they are, they don't like, you know, like especially if you talk about, like I believe in women deciding on their own bodies, I mean, they, the church still protests or still doesn't agree, agree to, have, uh, to have women deciding they should have children or not. So I don't remember. Was it a one-day conference, or how many days? I think it was two days. Two days. And we had people from all over the place. OK. How many people do you think were there in attendance? Oh, we had more than 150 people. Oh, yes. And people from all over, and a lot of young people. And there are pictures here of some of the ladies okay. of, the, of the conference, in okay. this book. Okay. And that's the reason I brought the book in case. So who, who has most of the documents relating to it? What documents do you have relating I to gave the book? I gave them all to this lady that did the uh, Blackwell uh -huh. uh, in California. She has them at the University of California, okay. all my papers. And what did you give them? Uh, the brochure of the, of the conference. Uh, oh, I oh, no, I have one, uh, only one, uh, one here that I'm not, uh, this is one of the leaflets that we had of our conference, obviously. Remember, this is one, one of the conferences that you can. Okay. So, yes. This is, uh, you kept this from the conference? Yes. Okay. It reads the Chicana and sex principal points. Mm -hmm. We believe that Chicana should develop a more healthy attitude towards sex and get rid of all misconceptions about the evil, quote unquote, of sex. Mm -hmm. Number two, we believe that we Chicanas have the same natural desires as men, and we should be allowed to express ourselves <laughs> without being labeled bad, bad women, quote unquote. Okay? We strongly urge all women to learn more about their natural functions of the body, sex, and its implications in order to create a more stable society. Much insight can be gained into the following illegitimacy, mental disorder, criminal activities, social diseases, divorce, illegal abortions. So this is this was liberating in many ways. Well, I, I, I thought so. I, I, I kept it because I said, well, if somebody wants to have it, they can have it, or if you want to have it. But I mean, you read it, it is going to be in the record now, right? So, <laughs> But I'd like to have a copy. I'll give it Excuse to you. me. Uh, yeah, and I give, uh, uh, yes. Uh -huh. So, so uh, how, how was... Did, was this uh, conference a continuation of the feminist movement or not? No. I wanted to say, I learned a lot. That was my first impression to be, you know, also with the woman, the woman issues. But I, being a uh, Mexican-American, living in the United States, the, 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 the most uh, uh, richest country in the world, 
but who will lack so much alternative information. I don't have the luxury like some of other people have. I'm only working on the LLBG or women issues. Now, I work on any issue that I can work. Right now, I'm working on, it, on I'm working on in the environment over there. So now, what were you going to show us here? Oh well, I want to show something very important. Uh, the, well, when we talk about uh, uh, the other issue that you wanted, that, that you uh, oh, well, I wanted to mention to you that I have thousand pages of the FEI. Walter has five hundred. Do you have all of the? Pages? Yes, I do. And they're at your home. Yes, and but this one is important. I want you to read it, please, for me. United States Government Memorandum, Houston, uh, 42370 is the date on there. Uh, regarding Yolanda Garza Birdwell, Mayo leader, uh, RM Miscellaneous. On 42370, U.S. Attorney Anthony J.P. Ferris, Houston, advised he believed that there might be something irregular concerning subject, in this case you. She speaks Spanish with a non-Spanish intonation, appears to be, be well-educated and organized and schooled in revolutionary ideas. And although claims to be of Mexican descent, she may very well have come from Cuba. Did you come from Cuba? <laughs> <laughs> he suggested that an investigation into her background may uncover her true identity. It is recommended that a case be opened and assigned to determine if the subject is a U.S. citizen. Mm -hmm. I and it's, uh, yeah. it's stamped as, well, it was unclassified. Unclassified, yeah. yes. Well, uh, th but they gave it to us after it was. So I wanted to mention this to you, is that I have never been accused of taking anything except all my arrests that have been, uh, been for political, for, 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 uh, political reasons. Mm -hmm. And this was done because, like I say, I felt, some people say, oh my God, you have a, I say, I would be worried if I didn't have a, a, an FBI, the way it is. So in other words, this tells you that no matter how good you are, or, uh, because I feel like I am very good, I, and I feel very good about myself, and then for them to have the audacity to do this, it shows you the racism. Not only Cubans question, we Mexican-Americans do too. You see, this is racism. So I'm writing my, my take on my 50 years in the United States, and I'm using this in my book, in my little pamphlet, this one, okay. and I'll, I'll give it to you once I finish all my, my notes. I'm, I'm writing my experiences of, of all the activities I have done. Okay. I have done other so let's, uh, let's take a break, Yolanda, yeah. and then we'll come back and, and, uh, yes. and cover the, uh, the HISD. Yes, the, the, let's ask the ladies how they feel it. I mean, do they, do they have time? Do you have time? To be present? Oh, yes. For the next interview? Yes, for the next yeah. interview. So we'll take about a 30 minute break so y'all can. Uh, yes. Yeah, and then we'll come back at, uh, let's say, uh, 11 30. No, Is that good? too much time. Okay. You tell me how much time. Okay, well, ask the ladies there. What do you need? You need. Uh, how let's much come time? back at, at 11. 11, because that okay. way we have to, I have to go and see my granddaughter. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right. All right. Whew. Okay, ladies, if you have any questions. Okay, we're, we're recording. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's, uh, let's focus on the Chamrock Hilton uh, Hotel. It's no longer here in Houston. Um, it was off on South Main and, uh, and not far from, uh, let's see, Holcomb, right? Yes, that's okay. What took place and when did that take place? What was the main reason for having a protest there? Okay, uh, we learn again, we were informed, we were working with the people who had more political power than we did, and inform us that uh, a Republican uh, group was coming to have, uh, to have a conference here in, in Houston uh, and talk about us, discuss about us, the, the Mexican-American community. And, it uh, wasn't the Republican convention, right? No, no. It was just a Republican, mainly, but then Democrats also were involved. Okay. They uh, wanted to have a conference to discuss us, our problems, okay? So we learned about it, and we wanted out how we, we, we met with some of them, okay, of the first people that come over. And we asked them, so if they wanted to know about us, we wanted them to have the conference here in this area, in the north side. 
And what year was this, you know? Mm, I don't know. It has to be the 70s because I don't remember exactly the years, but okay. it is in the newspaper. Okay, in which newspaper? Chronicle. All the, all this, all the, all, every activity, that's what you, they covered. Okay. And they didn't cover it uh, very accurate, but they covered us. Okay. And um, so what happened is that they, uh, we had meetings and asked them to give the money, 20, I don't know, $20,000 that we're going to uh, spend to use it in the community because we need the money. Mm -hmm. And the ladies could provide the cooking and they refused. We met and met and it was very nice and then they didn't, they didn't want to accept it. And who, who, who uh, was the organizer of this event? Was it the Republican Party, the Democratic Party? Who was the, the sponsoring organization? Well, of one of the guest speakers was a man from Dallas, a political person, short guy that used to be, um, uh, he was a Republican, you know, mm -hmm. and he, he was a guest speaker. I forgot his name. He, he uh, was, he's a Republican now, all I know is, I uh, forgot his he's name. He's still in office? I believe he's not in office, but he's he is very office. old, uh, but he was very prominent, very right wing, okay? Okay, so tell us who initially within Mayo saw this event and said, we need to do something about it. How did that happen? Did it take place in the meeting? Okay, well, as, as, uh, I want to give you back that we were extremely active in everything that was going on in the community. Who received the first call, Gregory or us, I don't know. No. A meeting took place among the leaders, mm -hmm. and we decided that approach them to have the meeting at the north side because we wanted the funds to stay in the in the north side because we need the funds or still do. Right. So then they refused, mm -hmm. and uh, because they refused in '94, we had a lot of ladies that knew how to cook wonderful tacos and food. Okay, a lot of food. So it was, uh, we were working with a lot of people. Be uh, Berta Hernandez was the name of the person, the lady of the community mm -hmm. that had a lot of uh, pool in this area. Mm -hmm. She lived in the projects, so mm -hmm. what is called the projects, government projects. Right, okay. right. Uh, we asked her if she could uh, cook something mm -hmm. for us tacos. Mm -hmm. And what we did is, we didn't tell anybody, but again, we did the same Mayo th th theory. Very few people, but we, we had a lot of young people coming with us, and we show up in line to the table, and we just put our names like we were attending, and we had our food in, 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 mm -hmm. in bags, okay? Mm -hmm. When we got in, mm -hmm. we just put the food on the table, and we say, we're not going to eat your food, but we're going to be here. Mm -hmm. It's a protest. Mm -hmm. That did not go very well. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, but, but we did stay, and then the police was called. And the police comes and says, "Please, please, don't, don't, don't break the chandeliers." I said, "No, I'm not going to break that the chandeliers, you know, because they were so afraid that we were going to be disrupted. We were disrupted, but not to destroy. No, that was not that, the issue." So, would you consider that strategy guerrilla? Oh yeah, I would say so. Okay, it was very good. It worked because we were, we got in. We were all dressed. That's another thing about being actors. We I believe in dressing accordingly, not. Like, you know, other, other people had the idea of being dragged. No, I, I like to dress. Mm -hmm. So I went in, and when my son was little, we, we, Mr. Hernandez went in with all the, we had the food. How many people were participating with you guys? It was about, at least no less than 40 people. It was a lot of people. Whoa. Because we had a lot of young people. Younger, I mean, four, 15, 16 years old. All dressed with uh, khaki pants, and, and they knew what to do. And we had pictures of them protecting us because I spoke, and we did not let this official speak. Mm -hmm. So what happened there is that we showed the out, and there were some Mexican American uh, officials that, that they were not very happy with what we did. But what we wanted to show that they have to listen to our request. It would have been nice if they wanted to have it at the chamber. I have something also in the community. And, and so? What was your understanding of the main focus of the conference? Yolanda? Like it's every every conference of the power structure, mm -hmm. how to tell us lies that they uh, make commitments that they don't keep lies and lies because you have to make sure that mm -hmm. what if I tell you something here and you check it out and, you, and it doesn't, they, I'm a liar. Mm -hmm. They are liars. A lot of them told us that we're going to be in our democracy that we have, that we have rights. 
please, look, I had economic, some economic, uh, well, workers, but we had economic powers, and, and look how they treated me. I was asked, uh, you know, so, th so therefore in that particular instance, we show them that they have to be, they have to be accountable. Mm -hmm. If they say they're gonna work in the community, like this beautiful center that you all open here, this is great. Mm -hmm. I hope a lot of people use them, use this type of, because you pay taxes, it's yours. Don't ever think that it's not in yours, this, this is yours. So when they, they lie to us, and we, we put them to shame. Now you were the Mayo Spix yes, person? Yes. What was your role at that event? Oh, did, okay. did people have different roles? Yes, okay. We were occupying the tables. We sat at the tables and we brought our own food because we could not afford the food. It was a you brought your own food? Yes, the tacos. Okay. <laughs> they, were, they were good. <laughs> and then the police came and asked the bankers. The first thing that he was concerned is about don't the break, chandelier. Don't break the chandeliers. I had a chandelier in my house. It was in my house. So why would I, why, why I break? I mean, I don't want to break anything. Mm -hmm. oh, but I want them to understand that they, if they were going to spend $20,000, they should have spent $10,000. Yeah? Mm -hmm. It's the same thing happens in the African-American community. You know, a lot of money is spent, but they don't spend it in our communities. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I passed by close to the uh, university last night. My God, oh, there's an area that needs a lot of help there. Okay, so Yolanda, uh, Let's put what happened there in, in this frame for now. Uh, uh, from a political standpoint, what were the major accomplishments of Mayo participating in that event, politically speaking? Okay. For a long time, the dominant political parties have had a whole to say, oh, well, we got the, Me the, the Mexican American, the Democrats, or the Republicans have. We were able to break both of them with our narrative, and I hope it, you know, it still needs to be challenged mm -hmm. because both boys are not are not doing their job. Mm -hmm. and that's my opinion. And at, la at least at that time, we were able to focus on that. And it's more focused, obviously. But right now, it, it seems to me, at least in that era, mm -hmm. was very good from that time to the time that the Mexican-American studies established at the University of Houston, because let me tell you, no surprise, that was the time that it was established. Now they don't even want Dolores Huerta, they don't even want to talk about it. the things that happen in our history, they don't want film. Okay. They want, so, so yes, in that way, we break that, and the myth that we cannot criticize the Democrats. The Democrats also have been very ne negative to our culture, to our so, so you mentioned, uh, Yolanda, that both the Republicans and the, the Democrats have some deficiencies in terms of working with La Raza. Absolutely, they have uses. Look so, what happened with the immigration issue. So do you consider it an animal with two heads, so to speak, politically speaking? It's the same animal. It's the same animal, both of them, both of the, it's, like the, it's like the same system that we have the same thing. And look at the, the only person that is speaking about economics right now, that is the, the uh, inequality that exists right now is uh, Ms. Warren, Elizabeth Warren, mm -hmm. uh, and, and the um, Democratic Party. Uh, the other ones have just don't, they walk around, they, because they do it well. This is a problem that we have that is very, 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 very dangerous to us. Mm -hmm. Because you're making hundred or making a lot of money, and you have made it, if I'm oppressed, guess what? If I am rejected, if I am oppressed like the people in Ferguson and the, Me the Mexican American and, and here in, in the valley that have the lower mm -hmm. economic power, mm -hmm. guess what? You're oppressed too. Because you put it, the whole category is it's a Mexican American. So it doesn't matter if you have a million dollars or not. So going back to the accomplishments that Mayo gained, politically speaking, mm -hmm. what were some of the other accomplishments? By, uh, by attending that meeting. Oh, by attending? By make, disrupting the, uh, yes, well, we, the order of things, so to speak. Well, we showed that at least uh, 10 of us in the leadership had the ability not to be too concerned about reputation or being liked or being accepted. Actually, we say you can be truthful and be rejected, accept rejection as part of the, as part of the, the phenomena. That's what we have. We did, mm -hmm. like other groups have done it. Okay, put it in different words, Yolanda. You said accept rejection. Um, 
Give us another example. Oh, okay. I have had, <laughs> I have had cases uh, here in Houston mm -hmm. where <clears throat> people will say, oh, we like what you do, but, you know, I, I can benefit from it, but that's as far as I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. They don't want to go any farther mm -hmm. because they don't want to see the root of the problem. The root of the problem is that we have a system that for generations and generations has been oppressing other people. That's how the United States has become the most powerful country in the world. But not, not at an educational level. Mm -hmm. It has become in power, machines. Mm -hmm. We are the most fe fear country because we have a lot of power to exterminate the others. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're the most powerful country in the world. But are we economic, are we, uh, are we have any quality? I can see it here in Northside just by driving after not driving here for 12 or many years. Mm -hmm. There is not, there is packets of people, there is no distribution. The, the poverty level in the United States is disgusting. Okay, so going back to the, com the conference you London, mm -hmm. what other uh, goals or objectives were accomplished, politically speaking? Politically speaking, again, the message to, to our students is that don't be, don't be, uh, don't believe everything that you hear. Check it with reality. Check it because it's not it, that. That's how we. That's how we did at the time. We we challenged that. And and, and like I say, when I say about rejection, a lot of people felt very intimidated about that mm -hmm. because the system that we have, and this is what I'm going with. I have visited 15 foreign countries, among them China, Russia, and Cuba twice. I went in 12, 2012, 20, 2011. We went Walter and I to Cuba. And uh, I went in 1970 to work three months in Cuba as a, as a, as a volunteer. Mm -hmm. They have a mixed economy. They don't have communists, they have mixed economy. Mm -hmm. France and Germany are very much into, and as you know now, we open relationships with, we're opening relationships with Cuba. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying here is that uh, U.S. has been a very interesting country, and I wanted to emphasize the wonderful history that U.S. has. On the workers, they were the May 10 workers issue was from the United States. The woman issue was beginning in the United States. Mm -hmm. The issue of a lot of very, very, very interesting development. The people of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Mm -hmm. Some aspects of it should be guarded. But let me tell you, some aspects should not. Like somebody challenged me one time and said, well, you are free. I said, yes. I said, but this is, uh, we have to serve, uh, conserve this. I said, and it, it, we cannot do things illegal. It was legal to have a slavery, correct? And I know that. It was legal to, uh, to, to prohibit you from uh, speaking Spanish. It was legal for you not to attend the schools because you with whites. So this tells you, this brings me back to the issue. It is all right to challenge what is legal. And according to a book that I read from a very important person here in, uh, here in Houston, a professor at the university, here in uh, the African American University, he wrote the book in reference of the money that these elite universities made out of a slave. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we have to talk about. So in other words, when somebody comes to me and says, well, but you are now in a, in, a, in a free country, yes, but I have worked for the freedoms that I have, all the people have worked, and I respect that, mm -hmm. and I want them to, I want to honor those people. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I don't want big people to sell me and say that you cannot talk about that. Of course I can talk about that. that was legal. It was illegal for us to speak Spanish. My father was told in, in, in a big sign, no dogs or Mexicans allowed. Mm -hmm. how, am I supposed to, how am I supposed to feel about the United States? Yes, I don't go to the 4th of July. No, because let me tell you why. 4th of July for me, when they did that to my father, when they are more equity, equity, when it's more equality, then I will honor this. No, 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 I'm not. Because my father, he was a great man, and he was told, no dogs or Mexicans allowed. And many Mexicans that have made it to the bourgeoisie, they think it's because they have a Mercedes or 
fine. I don't. I like. I like good things. I have pearls. I like. I have diamonds. I. I'm. I'm. I'm all right. But I'm not impressed. I'm not going to take it with me. And I'm not. I'm not better than anybody else. And that some people feel like just because they made hundred thousand dollars, they're better. We need to be in community to change the society, or else we're not going to have it. There was a conflict with Mayo in the way that HISD was doing business mm -hmm. in the 70s. And there was a participation by Mayo at one of the meetings. Yes. What year was that? And, and uh, how was the decision made by the Mayo members okay. to participate? Again, there were people high, people from, from Washington, and I don't even know who they were, okay? That came to study the situation of race uh, uh, integration in Houston. Mm -hmm. I didn't meet with them. I was not in that level, remember? I was just, you know, have to keep up with a house, a husband, <coughs> and being an activist, and, and a child, so. But, but I know some people did, and they told us about this meeting. We went and asked them to be in the, to, to be in the agenda. The HISD meeting? Yes, sir. Okay, and this was what year? I don't know, a 1970, no, it was very, very early in my life. So it 70, happened. 70, probably 70. Okay. Yes. Okay. It is in the newspaper. It's in the Chronicle. And tell us how this decision was made. Uh, where was it made? Where did Mayo make this uh, decision? Okay. Before we went to the meeting, we At always yes, we always prepare ourselves. Even though you know they say, uh, you know, no Mexicans or dogs allowed. We we do have brains, you know. <laughs> so we we decided every that before. If it, if they don't allow us to to be at the agenda, see, we asked, and we had liberal people in the agenda in the, in the board, and we asked them to give us permission to speak, but precisely because of the same things that are happening right now. It's a shame that we don't have history books about Mexican Americans. We only talk about the great people that came and took the other. La, la, la. That's all. So we, we have the same the, the same uh, issues that we had before we still have. So who made the formal request to speak to the HISD? Gregorio and I. Okay. Yeah. And, and you went to the HISD office? Yes, and, but it was other people working on another level. I'm okay. not going to say that they were the only ones. There were other higher ups than us, you know, with more power and more know-how. So what do you think, Yolanda, was the overarching goal of Mayo by attending that HISD meeting? What, well, was, what well, was the main goal? Okay, at the time that we didn't have a representation in the board. Okay. None. Okay. The amount of Latinos that we are here, we did not have them at all. That's when another man came up, Castillo came up, came, and another uh, prominent person, and I forgot. Leo, I Castillo. Leonel Castillo. Leonel Castillo. Okay. But it was another person's uh, name that I forgot that, that became a board member after that. Mm -hmm. After that. So our, 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 our thing was, uh, education is the most important thing. That's where they have got us. That is the thing. More than anything else. It's like a stealing more money than it's not giving us the, the right, uh, the right uh, level field for education. Now I saw a picture in the Houston Chronicle where, where uh, Mexican American youth were actually pushing a door. Was that, were you part of that? That was the young lady uh, that I mentioned, <laughs> a young, very young, stronger than I am, and of course I was younger too. Yes, we, what happened is that we asked her nicely, okay, put us in the agenda, put us in the agenda. They were going to this, to adjourn, adjourn, mm -hmm. without letting us speak. Well, we had, and I, so we jumped on the table. I did, you have a picture, of, there's a picture of me on the table. <laughs> And, and yes, I did, I did, and we pushed the door, and we, uh, well, we were arrested. Was Santo Hernandez in part of that? Okay. So, yes, they did not arrested. let, yes, we were, Walter was arrested, I was arrested, and, uh, but uh, as we were arrested, somebody was behind us and, and uh, pay our, pay our bail, and we get out, because we don't have a record, I mean, really, we, we, we don't. So and, and they arrested you because of uh, trespassing? No, because we, we got on top of the table and disrupted them. Uh -huh. <laughs> but I would do it again if I could jump, but I cannot jump. As <laughs> 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 well, it's true. I, mean, I, I had to hold him. However, Walter was arrested too. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, and, uh, so, it's, so, so it's important to remember about education. If you have no, if you have education, Oh, but not education that they only give you, one person gives you. No, please, read different books. I read uh, a book uh, 
recently, about 100 years of Brownsville, and it's the first time that I ever see Juan Cortina presented in a positive, at least fair way. They mm -hmm. always present Juan Cortina as a bandit. All of us are bandits, I mean. So, uh, so Yolanda, going back to that protest, what is something that you can share with us today that very few people know what you went through? What you went through, not not all of the members, but you. Mm. Did you go into the restroom before the event and say, "Do I want to do this?" Something like that. Was there something very secretive you can share with us? Mm. In that particular uh, moment, uh, all, all the events of Mayo, I did not. Uh, I didn't have the. I did not know that it we were going to be uh, jumping on the table. I mean, that that was it. But we did. But we did. We did know that it was going to be a, a possibly because we did, we were prepared before that. Mm -hmm. And who were your baiters? The people who were ready to. I don't remember. Teach you out. I don't remember, but we were. We got a. Uh, we got a. You know, we didn't spend the night in jail. And you were taken to the city jail. Oh yes, and and, you know, and, uh, and people knew us. I mean, even the people that mm -hmm. fingerprint you mm -hmm. and all that. They were very nice and friendly. Uh, so if you would have done it again with your Mayo members, what do you think you would have done different to accomplish more goals? Well, yes, I will say, let me tell you. Obviously, we all operate this again for what we learn, our experiences, and what we study. What I will do different is like all of you, learn as much as you can about yourself, about your history, study, get a degree, but learn about the other. Don't ever think about the other communities, especially since we live in a very multicultural environment. Learn about the other person, the other group, the other, the other uh, uh, pain. For example, at that time, uh, Mayo became a little controversial with the other Mayos because he was supposed to be, and it is, it was focused on our people. Okay, so to be clear, there was a University of Houston Mayo group, yes. uh -huh. and then there was a Barrio Mayo. Yes. By, you belong to the Barrio Mayo yes. group, okay. And what was the main conflict between both? It was not groups? a conflict, it was just different experiences. Obviously, you are students, so you have papers to write, books to read, mm -hmm. and we, some of us, like me, uh, I was, uh, I work in my lifetime with Walter. In fact, I worked for an oil company for 10 years, and I made more money than Walter for two years. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I kept him because of money. I, be I supported him too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, because you know it's very important. Because some people, unfortunately, they say, "Oh, you marry a gringo." Because no, I married him because I like him. You know, mm -hmm. you see what I mean? And he liked me. Actually, it, it was surprising that he liked me because I'm radical. Most people don't like that. <laughs> so, Yolanda, you've been arrested before, or was this was the only time? No, no, no. I've been arrested uh, with Walter that time. Another time, I was arrested because I challenged a teacher that was mistreating Mexican-American students here in Houston, and they came and arrested me because I was, they brought the law that I have not used in 130 years because I was interfering with somebody's job. Mm -hmm. um, what student was this and what school? I don't remember, but, it, but the case they put it in brass in uh, Pasadena where the Ku Klux Klan is. Mm -hmm. Oh, this and was I, in what year? The year, the Mayo years. Okay. Said, but and you did it as a Mayo member? Yes, Okay. okay. and they arrested me they, 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 they filed a suit against me, mm -hmm. and then I went to court. Mm -hmm. And guess where the court was? In, in Pasadena. It was the, 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 head, the head of the Cooper's plan was in Pasadena, or mm -hmm. it still is. Mm -hmm. So when I finished uh, there, I, uh, something happened. I, I rejected something, or I did something, and they arrested me again. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> the, this is something very interesting. The man that everybody loved, Marvin Sindler, mm -hmm. a very oh, great guy, supposedly, okay, question liar. He interviewed me before that, and he told me he was a uh, something else that he wasn't. He just wanted to have information about me, about how I was making my living and all that. But in any case, to make this story short, I was arrested at the time. I was arrested at the, at the Israeli consulate because I went to Palestine, and I am, I am against the occupation of Palestine, mm -hmm. and I dressed as a Palestinian, and I wanted to give an order to to the um, uh, to the Israeli consul right there on Greenway, and I was arrested another time. So I have been arrested three times. 
let's uh, let's get back to uh, the topic, or, or rather, let's broach the topic of promoting Mexican American studies, Chicano studies, here in Houston. Where did Mayo participate in the promotion of Mexican American studies? Well, we went to every meeting that they invited us. We even went to LULAPS. That's when I made the mistake of saying I slept with these guys, and I didn't, you know. <laughs> I didn't, that didn't go very well. But hey, hey, we all make mistakes, right? So it, we went to a lot of meetings. They asked us uh, uh, at the time. They asked us for for interviews. Uh, they um, that went uh, okay. I uh, received uh, at least two calls from people saying that we were going to be infiltrated. You know, so we had a lot of support. And how okay, how we can promote this? Let me tell you, right now it's a very critical time. Right now, Houston is very different than the Valley. Over there, it's just another world. Yeah. Here. At least you have this type, I can be here, okay? Uh, if we do not have the knowledge of each other as human beings, and if we don't have studies on, Mex on women, on Mexican Americans, on African Americans, on American Indians, we are going to be a very poor country, mm -hmm. just like any other country. Okay, um, so <clears throat> with regards to examples, Yolanda, where exactly did these meetings take place that discussed the formation of a Mexican American Studies program, for example. Okay, uh, Leonel Castillo had, used to have an open university. Right. Something similar to what you're doing now. And that's how he started. And he... Hispanic <coughs> International University. You remember the open right. door university? Yeah, yeah. I don't remember, but he invited me to come and see him one time. As a Maya member? Well, I was Maya. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And we just discussed, of course, he was, you know, who he was, sure, sure. another level, but he, were, he was accessible. Mm -hmm. He was not afraid of us. You know who Leonel Castillo was, right? Mm -hmm. Well, Leonel Castillo was, uh, by Carter administration, assigned to be the, the immigration officer, official. Mm -hmm. by the, and so he was very high up. You either very high up or very low to accept us, and the middle people have no problem. <laughs> you, you understand that mm -hmm. dynamic? The very high, okay, Leonel was high, intellectually, economically, and, and, and his culture. The very low, they don't know anything, or you know, we're making it, but the middle that they have a little bit, you know, maybe even 100,000, that they think that they are the 1%. You picture the Leonel Castillo? No, sir, I have it. Oh, they have it? Community Center, it's okay. right here in the neighborhood. Okay, I'll go yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll so, tell you at the end of the interview. So that is the kind of thing that we did. So you had a, <coughs> you had a conversation with Leonel Castillo about the formation of Mexican American studies? No, uh, but, but, uh, but different issues. Okay. Just like we're doing now, but at least he, he, he uh, received us. Okay. He had the door open. Mm -hmm. Do you think that Mr. Cruz will leave the door open <coughs> in, in Austin to, to talk to me? Mm -hmm. And he's a representative of us right, right. in Texas, right? Cruz. Ted Cruz. Yeah. Ted Cruz, yeah. That just give you, and he, he receives our taxes. Okay. So let's put all the <coughs> marbles together. Okay. Uh, so to speak, uh, to conclude, Yolanda. Yes. Um, where did you see your position and your role within Mayo as being the most crucial at the time that you were involved? Where did you see you made the greatest contribution? Probably, to be honest, maybe to myself. Mm -hmm. The first converse contribution to myself. Because gave me the opportunity to learn one very important lesson. Nothing happens if you are not with, an, uh, with a group. You may disagree on something, while well, Walter and I don't agree with everything, but if we agree on the main issues, it gives you power. That's what I learned. So that is the lesson that I wanted to, you know, that, that I learned and I can pass on. Mm -hmm. Nothing will happen if you do everything individual. And, and you as the, the culture, the mainstream culture, loves to do that. Hey, you don't all right, you forget about that. You know, don't, you know, that is not a very good way. That is the main thing. And, and I would say to you is that you need to go and visit your representatives of you vote for, even if you don't like it. If I had to go to Cruz, I don't particularly like him, I don't know him in person, but if I had to go and see him about having more studies on, 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 on women issues, on, on food uh, allocation, on poverty or whatever, guess what, I will, say, uh, I will go and see uh, him. Let's that is what we're not doing. We say, ah, oh, no, it's a political. Go to the offices of the politicians and ask them, if I pay you taxes, if I pay you your position, what have you done for me? Mm -hmm. And we're not doing it. Um, let's move to this last question, Yolanda. Um, 
let's assume that Houston Community College or some university or some college out there provided you a teaching position. Mm. Just with what you currently have, as far as your certificates and your degrees, what do you think you would teach within Mexican American studies? What course would it be, do you think? I will teach them the importance that just because a river is crossing, mm -hmm. that we did not cross the border across, you know, we're, we, did, we did not cross the border. Mm -hmm. We were here many, many years. Okay. So would your course be on history? Would it be on government? Would it be on politics? Be more clear with okay. us. Okay. What I would, would you be, teach? No, I will be on the current issues. Current, current issues. issues. Current issues are important right now. So politics. Politics. Okay. The, the main issues that I wanted to cover to the, and the leave message to you is this. If you don't get alternative information, you are getting 30% of the information. Because I mean, you need to have alternative information. And it's there mm -hmm. in the internet. And, and uh, uh, a, a writer, uh, uh, his name is uh, Juan Gonzalez. Harvest of Empire, he wrote a book about history of Latinos in, in America. He came to Houston. Mm -hmm. I do not know him, but he wrote this very important book. It's called Juan Gonzalez, Harvest of Empire, 1950, the history of Latinos in America. I will be in current issues as far as where to go for information. And nothing illegal within the framework. This is what I would do if you asked if you gave me that opportunity, if, if I was given that opportunity. Mm -hmm. And to write more about our people that have done wonderful things. And not to have uh, Dolores Huerta as a, as a person non grata. Absolutely not. Her others non grata. And have a, a study of economics. Economics is something that is killing all of us because we don't understand it. Economics. Mm -hmm. and, uh, John Perkins, Confessions of an, 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 an Economic Hitman. He wrote a very important book about economics and how, why are we so powerful in the United States? Guess what he does? He did it in the book. He is right there and he's, he was in the FBI, okay? I mean, unless we don't believe what they say, all of they say, they go to other countries and destroy their economy and extract the very best, and that's what we have here. So we benefit. We benefit with the exploitation in Mexico, because I'm Mexican, I'll tell you something about Mexico. Me Mexican elite with Mexico and the United States elite, they sleep in the same bed. They are all connected. The Mexican people are victims of the system that we have, and we have the same system. Capitalism is in U Mexico, capitalism is in the United States, except that this is an imperialist, and that is not an imperialist. And they're killing us with arms. We're sending a lot of arms to, to Mexico, mm -hmm. killing, and, and it's, it's, it's destroying the country, mm -hmm. destroying the people. Mm -hmm. And, we cons and the, con the, the drug consumption is here. And the money, where it goes? To the banks. And the banks are where? Well, in Europe or United States. So what am I supposed to be? Happy about what, what this change of NAFTA? Yes, we accept NAFTA, but they don't accept, they go to have companies over there, but they don't accept the people. Mm -hmm. So we have a lot of things that we can learn. So that's what I will do in the current issues. And if I have to do it over again, as I told you uh, in the short break, I don't like mathematics, but I will use mathematics because let me tell you, when I went to China, China was not a friend of the United States. And look at China, that was 20 something years ago. Mm -hmm. And look at China now. It's, it's almost second economy in mm -hmm. the, the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I, I have been to 15 foreign countries, as I mentioned. And Cuba is a country that has, and that's the reason they have made a lot of mistakes too. Yes, of course they have. But Cuba has had the ability to say, no, we don't want. U.S. supposed to give Guantanamo back to Cuba, but they don't want to do that. And it belongs, that land belongs to Cuba. So there are things when people talk about democracy, it's another thing about world democracy I want you to tell you. You have as much democracy as your money can buy. Now there's a book about that thing. That we have the best democracy that money can buy. And we see in that right now, look at the Koch brothers, how much, how much democracy. Look at that uh, Elderson from, you know, that is paying a lot of money for the right wing, and that is against that. So democracy is not 
That's why it's a lot of people rejecting democracy. They say, what well, democracy, but look, look what democracy that has done. A lot of damage, and also because of the, yes, we have the right to speak, but they, they, they suppress it, they don't give us power, you see. And also democracy is if you participate. If you don't participate, the only few make, make decisions for you. Muchas gracias, Yolanda, oh, and thank you, you for the major contributions well, that I, you made, well, it, along with Mayo. Thank you, thank you. And you I, I wanted to tell you over there what I'm doing. Yes, sir, over there, uh, this is uh, what I'm doing over there on the island. I am, uh, I'm working on on uh, environmental issues. Okay. So I just give you that, and if you want one, I can give it to you. Okay. So keep active, and thank you so much, and I wish you very, very, thank you for inviting me. Okay.